Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using slope deflection method. In this frame, there are two inclined members AB and CD, and there is a horizontal member BC. In this frame, there is no member load. In the joint B, there is a nodal point load 20 kN. It is acting towards the right side. So, the sway will occur towards the right side. The moment of inertia for AB is given as 2i. For BC, it is i. And for CD, it is 4i. Length of BC is given as 4 meter. We have to find the inclined length of AB and CD. We can take this triangle and apply Pythagoras theorem. Here we have 2 meter root of 6 square plus 2 square. We will get the length of AB which is 2 root 10 meter. Now we can take this triangle and apply Pythagoras theorem. Here we have 4 meter root of 4 square plus 8 square. We will get the length of CD which is 4 root 5 meter. Now let us find the fixed end moments. We know that in this frame there is no member load. So all of the fixed end moments are 0. Now let us see how this frame deforms. This frame deforms in this way. Now let us make a line connecting the points A and this point, this point and this point, this point and the point D. Now we can connect the joint B and this point and then we can make a vertical line, then a horizontal line so that we will get a triangle. We know that the horizontal part is a delta. Let us keep the vertical line as a delta V1 and the inclined line as a delta I1. We have to find delta I1 and delta V1 in the terms of delta. This angle and this angle will be same. So if this angle is theta1, this angle also will be theta1. Let us take this triangle. In this triangle, cos theta1 is equal to 6 upon 2 root 10. 6 upon 2, we will get 3. Tan theta1 will be equal to 2 upon 6. We will get 1 upon 3. Now let us take this triangle. In this triangle, cos theta1 is equal to delta upon delta i1. We can equate this and this. Finally, we will get the relation delta i1 is equal to root 10 delta upon 3. Now in this triangle, let us find tan theta1. That will be delta v1 upon delta. We can equate these two. Finally, we will get the relation delta v1 is equal to delta upon 3. Now we can connect the joint C and this point by a line. And then we can make a vertical line and then a horizontal line. So that we will get one more triangle. We know that the horizontal distance is a delta. Let us keep the vertical distance as a delta v2 and the inclined distance as a delta i2. We have to find delta i2 and delta v2 in the terms of delta. This angle and this angle will be same. Let us keep the angle as theta 2. Let us take this triangle. In this triangle, let us find cos theta 2. That will be 8 upon 4 root 5. After simplifying, we will get 2 upon root 5. Now let us find tan theta 2. That will be 4 upon 8. Finally, we will get 0 0.5. Now let us take this triangle. In this triangle, cos theta 2 will be delta upon delta i2. We can equate this and this. Finally, we will get this relation. 
Now in this uh, triangle, let us find tan theta 2 that will be delta V2 upon delta. Now we can equate these two. Finally, we will get this uh, relation for the member AB. We have to take this uh, displacement which is uh, root 10 upon 3 delta. For the member BC, we have to take both of these uh, two displacements. So we have to add both of these. When we add both of them, we will get 5 delta upon 6. For the member CD, we have to take this uh, displacement which is root 5 upon 2 delta. Now let us make the slope deflection equations. First let us make them in the member AB. Since this member is subjected to SUVE, with the equations we have to add the SUVE movements. We know that the SUVE occurs towards the right side. So for the inclined members AB and CD, the SUVE movements should be taken as negative and for the horizontal member it should be taken as positive. We know that the fixed end movements are 0. Length of AB is 2 root 10. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for AB is 2i. So instead of i we have to apply 2i. And the displacement is root 10 upon 3 delta. So instead of delta we have to apply root 10 upon 3 delta. In the point A there is a fixed support. So theta A will be 0. Finally, in the member AB, we have made two equations. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the member BC. We know that in this member also, there is a displacement. So, with the equations, we have to add the sway movements. Since the sway occurs towards the right side, in the horizontal member BC, the sway movements should be taken as positive. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. We know that we have to add these two displacements. When we add, we will get 5 delta upon 6. So instead of delta, we have to apply 5 delta upon 6. Finally, in the member BC, we have made two equations. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the member CED. We know that in this member also, the sway moments should be taken as negative. Length of CD is 4 root 5. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia is 4i. So instead of i, we have to apply 4i. We know that for the member CD, we have to take this displacement, which is root 5 upon 2 delta. So instead of delta, we have to apply that. Finally, in the member CD, we have made two equations. Now, let us make the joint equilibrium equations. In the joint B, when we add MBA and MBC, it will be 0. Let us apply the expressions for MBA and MBC. Then we have to add them. After adding, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 7. In the joint C, when we add MCB and MCD, it will be 0. Let us apply the expressions for MCB and MCD. Then we have to add them. After adding, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 8. We know that in this analysis, we need one more equation. Let us make that equation. Let us take the member AB and make a relation for RA. When we do that, we have to assume that the movements MAB and MBA are acting in the clockwise direction. Let us take movement about B and find RA. RA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 2 root 10. These two movements are acting in the clockwise direction so both of them are positive. Finally, for RA, we will get this expression. Now let us take the member CD and make an expression for RD. Here also we have to assume that the movements MDC and MCD are acting in the clockwise direction. By taking movement about C, we can make an expression for RD. 
Now let us take the frame and extend the member CAB and CD up to a point where both of them meet. Let us keep the meeting point as O. From the point A, let us make a horizontal line. From this point, let us make a vertical line and a horizontal line and connect with the joint D. Let us keep this point as a D double dash and this point as a D dash. We have kept this angle as theta 2. So this angle also will be theta 2. 8 minus 6, we will get this height which is 2. Let us take this triangle. Let us find tan theta 2. That will be d dash d upon 2. Initially, we have already found tan theta 2 which is 0 0.5. Let us equate both of these. Finally, for d d dash, we will get 1. Totally, it is 10. To find the distance of a d double dash, we have to subtract 1 by 10. When we do that, we will get 9. This distance is 2 and this distance is 4 minus 1 so that we will get 3. From the point O, let us make a vertical line. Let us keep this point as O dash and let us keep this point as O double dash. Let us keep this distance as x. So this distance should be 9 minus x. Let us make expressions for O O double dash from the point A and from the point D double dash. For the distance of 2, the height is 6. So for 2, it is 6. But I need the height at the distance of x. So we have to multiply with the x. So for O O double dash, we will get 3x. Now let us start from D double dash. For the distance of 3, the height is 6. So for 3, it is 6. But I need the height at the distance of 9 minus x. So we have to multiply with 9 minus x. We can equate these two. Finally, for x, we will get 3.6 meter. And for 9 minus x, we will get 5.4 meter. We know that OO double dash is 3x. Now we have the value of x. Using that, we can find OO double dash, which is 10.8 meter. Let us apply the value of x and 9 minus x. We know that this horizontal distance is 1 meter. So the horizontal distance to this line from the point D is 5.4 plus 1. So that we will get 6.4. Now let us find the inclined length of OA. For the distance of 2 meter, the inclined length is 2 root 10. So for 2, it is 2 root 10. But I need the inclined distance at the distance of 3.6. So we have to multiply with 3.6. When we do that, we will get to OA, which is 3.6 root 10. Let us find the inclined distance of OD. For the distance of 4 meter, the inclined distance is 4 root 5. So for 4, it is 4 root 5. But I need the inclined distance at the distance of 6.4. So we have to multiply with 6.4. When we do that, we will get OD, which is 6.4 root 5. We have to find the distance of OO dash. We have to subtract 6. When we do that, we will get 4.8. Now let us take a moment about the point O. R A is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is OA which is 3.6 root 10. This load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it is also negative and the distance is 4.8. MAP and MDC are acting in the clockwise direction so both of them are positive. RD is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is OD, which is 6.4 root 5. We can take this term on the right side so that it will come as positive. For RA and RD, we can apply these expressions. 
then we can simplify this equation after simplifying we will get this equation for MAB, MBA, MCD and MDC let us apply these expressions from the slope deflection equations after simplifying we will get this equation let us keep this equation as number 9 we have made three equilibrium equations the seventh one eighth one and the ninth one we can take a calculator and solve these three equations if you do not know how to solve three equations in the calculator see the description below there is a link you can click the link and watch the video i have used the calculator and got the values of ea theta b ea theta c and ea delta when we apply the values of ea theta b and ea delta in the equation number one we will get mab and when we apply them in the equation number two we will get mba when we apply the values of ea theta b ea theta c and ea delta in the equation number three we will get mbc and when we apply them in the equation number four we will get mcb when we apply the values of ea theta c and ea delta in the equation number five we will get mcd and when we apply them in the equation number six we will get mcd in this analysis we have found all of the moments for mab mba mcd and mdc we have got negative values that means all four of them are acting in the anti-clockwise direction for mbc and mcb we have got positive values that means both of them are acting in the clockwise direction using these directions we can draw the bending moment diagram here you can see the bending moment diagram now using these expressions we can find ra and rd for ra and rd we will get negative values that means the assumed direction is incorrect ra will be acting in this direction and rd will be acting in this direction now let us take the member bc and to find the reactions vb and vc by taking moment about c we can find vb we know that in the member bc there is no load so vb and vc will be having the same value but vb will be acting downwards and vc will be acting upwards here you can see the shear force diagram now we are going to end the session thank you for watching this video